are inside the friary today here at the shrine of the most blessed sacrament and in back of me you see a very powerful and profound uh, statue of our crucified Lord Jesus and you know Saint Francis of Assisi our Holy Father he had a great devotion to Jesus crucified in fact he would say I want to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified and we know that the center of Franciscan life of the Franciscan order is in the crucified Christ and here at the shrine we have a shroud exhibit while well, we brought in an expert today to tell us all about it. She's gonna explain uh, the, a little bit about the history, talk about the wounds of Jesus and the recent uh, science and innovation in the Shroud studies. Here is my good friend, Pam McHugh, and she is an engineer, a scientist, and she uh, gives uh, much of her time and her talents, education to studying the Shroud of Turin. She's gonna tell us all about the Shroud and so, Pam, uh, give us a little explanation and history about the shroud. So, the shroud is a, the shroud of Turin is a long linen cloth mm -hmm. that's widely acknowledged to be the most studied object in the world. Wow! Uh, it's been at the St. John the Baptist Cathedral in Turin, Italy since 1578, right. which is why modern researchers began calling it the Shroud of Turin. Mm. But before that, it was most commonly called the Holy Shroud mm. or just the Shroud. It's a long cloth, 14 feet long mm -hmm. by about three and a half feet wide. And it has the image of a man uh, on the same side of the cloth, both the front part, side of the man and the back side of the man. And this man was crucified in a way that is completely consistent with the Gospels. And millions of people believe that this is the actual burial cloth of Jesus. And from what I understand is that the image that is left on the shroud was uh, to believe like, like a bright light. That is, well, that is. Yeah. The mystery is there are two things that make up the shroud, mm -hmm. the image on the shroud. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing is blood. Right. It was on there first. Okay. It's mostly clotted blood right. and there's a, a fair amount of blood. Uh -huh. It's been determined that it was real blood. Uh -huh. uh, the second part of the image on the shroud is this strange yellow brown um, image area. It's not, it doesn't penetrate the cloth. It's very superficial only on the top mm -hmm. and it's that same yellow brown color everywhere. Mm -hmm. And scientists through a lot of study over a lot of years have determined that really uh, the only explanation uh, for how it could have been made is radiation. Mm -hmm. That's because the shroud has the image area in places where the body would not have touched the shroud. So it was made at least partially without touching it. Right. So radiation is the key. And radiation is not um, unusual. The sun radiates, we get sunburned, microwaves cook our oh, yeah. food. The, the uh, amazing thing for this is it had to be really controlled radiation mm -hmm. because it was enough to make the whole image, but it didn't burn the cloth mm -hmm. or distort the cloth. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that was amazing is this cloth wrapped the body and the radiation came from the inside. So it came from the body itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so can you give me a, an explanation on the wounds on the shroud and what, what they all mean? Yes, yeah. yes. So I'll start with uh, the nail holes. So the nail holes match the size of a Roman nail, about an inch wide, seven inches deep. That fits, if you took a replica, it would fit that perfectly. Uh, a, a thing to note here is the wound is in the wrist, not the palm of the hand. Much of the art shows the wound in the palm of the hand. This shows it in the wrist and doctors have done uh, analysis of it to show that that's actually where it needed to be, either through the meaty part of the palm or the wrist, because if it was in the middle, it would the body weight would pull it through. Um, this you can see this is more flowing blood. 
it's actually blood and water as you, you see and described in John 19. Uh, and, and so the doctors analyze that wound and can tell the wound size is between the fifth and sixth rib. Mm -hmm. It matches a Roman lance. They did work with cadavers to show that it would have pierced the, the pleura, the pericardium, and the heart's right atrium. Mm -hmm. And so that blood and water that flowed included pericardial fluid and fluid from the lungs that would have mm -hmm. built up during the crucifixion. And they can tell also that it was after death because of the proportion of blood and clear liquid that flowed. Mm. Uh, you can see the wounds on the face. Um, just uh, the face looks so peaceful that it's that it's terrible wounds. The the face, the cheeks, both have wounds. Lacerations. They lacerations. They're swollen. Mm -hmm. uh, the nose is abraded, and you can see maybe the cartilage broken. Mm -hmm. And when they were um, when they were looking at the shroud for foreign objects, they found dirt on the shroud. Okay. They found it on the feet area, the knee area and on the nose. Okay. So dirt doesn't have an exact fingerprint, but this dirt was relatively unique. It was travertine aragonite limestone, Whoa. which is the building material in Jerusalem. Okay. And that certainly, you know, it gives you uh, thoughts about our tradition that Jesus fell along the way mm -hmm. and the the dirt on the nose and the knees maybe, okay. maybe yeah. makes you think that more. And what about like the, the top of the head, like where the yes. crown of thorns was? So that you can clearly see the bleeding that came from wounds in the right. head that looked like the crown of thorn. There's actually, when you look at the whole thing, there's actually wounds on the very top of the head uh -huh. as well as around the head. So right. it probably would have been more a cap of thorns but that's what was consistent with crowns mm -hmm. in the eastern world at the time so it, it's consistent the scourge wounds the scourge wounds are up and down the body mm -hmm. uh, you can see them maybe a little better on the back side but you can also see scourge wounds on the front side also mm -hmm. there were one team of, uh, of folks who were doing forensics counted 372 wounds wow. and uh, they were deep wounds with you can see that it was clotted blood when you analyze uh, the shroud now and they feel that the man would have been in hemorrhagic mm -hmm. shock because he would have lost 20 percent of his blood so serious wounds wow. the wounds in the head would have been painful and a lot of blood but they wouldn't have been as serious as the scourge wounds mm -hmm. Uh, you know, speaking of, uh, of, of the science of it, what are the latest studies or innovations? I know that, that they also have uh, 3D images now of, of, the, of the shroud, of the, of the man on the shroud, which we yes. believe is Jesus. Yeah, it, exactly. So that comes from some of the same thing. There are, there are scientists, doctors, mm -hmm. people through the years that have spent time on their living room floor with a long piece of linen cloth trying to understand how, how the image on the shroud was made. What did that mean about the man on the inside? Right. And, and people understand it very well now. And they were able to make this beautiful three-dimensional rendering of mm -hmm. what the man in the shroud would look like. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're looking at on the flat photographs is it has a lot of the similar features, but it was a piece of cloth that wrapped a body. So you take out those distortions mm -hmm. and you see what the, what the beautiful image looks like. Okay. Wow. And uh, like for um, someone who would want some more information on the Shroud of Turin, where can they go? I know you, maybe some information you can, or websites you can lead us to. So the best website uh, that it tells you, it gives you the repository of information uh -huh. that's available on the Shroud is shroud.com. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of Facebook groups and things on the Shroud. There's a British Shroud of Turin Society that has a really good website. Uh, but I'll say some of the things on the web get kind of crazy on the mm -hmm. shroud. 
Um, there are good books that are out there on the Shroud, uh, and Shroud.com will point you mm -hmm. to those. Okay. And just one more question. You know, with your uh, background in science and engineering and, you know, studying the Shroud, uh, what has this done for your personal faith, your uh, relationship with, with Christ? Uh, it's amazing. I, so my story is, I heard about the Shroud in the 70s and 80s, right. and I was very interested in it. Then carbon-14 dating uh -huh. came out. Carbon-14 is a very accurate uh -huh. um, method to date mm -hmm. linen. And the carbon-14 test said that this linen was made in the 13th century. And so I thought, well, it's beautiful, but it's, but it's probably not the real burial shroud. Well, uh, then I was ex exposed to an exhibit that said how, how strange the shroud is and how unique it is, that strange image that gives you so much detail in the negative. And I thought, this, this is real. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that since, that just in 2019, the carbon-14 dating was discredited. Whoa. It was found to be not mm -hmm. accurate. They, okay. they set up the test wrong. They actually uh, manipulated the data and hid data. So it was the worst of science. But me as a scientist had confidence in that in the 80s yeah. when it was done. So the, the dating is really no longer an impediment to believing that the shroud is the authentic burial shroud of Christ. Hey, we thank you, Pam, for your time with us today and for sharing your expertise, your knowledge uh, with us. And so we thank you everybody for watching know that we're praying for you please go uh to uh to to the website that pam pointed out and uh also please like comment share subscribe tell all your friends about this and until next time may almighty god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit amen